and welcome to Wageningen University in Research. I'm Julia, and today I'm joined by people from the online master's program of nutritional epidemiology and public health. And I think it'd be nice to start off with a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Cora Bustra, and I'm one of the main teachers in this online program. And I'm Rolf Martijn, I'm program director of the online master in nutritional epidemiology and public health here at Wageningen University. Do you think you could compare for us the online master's program and the traditional campus master's program? Uh, definitely, um, but first maybe focus on what's similar. It's the same program, it's the same courses, it's the same degree that you get in the end, it's the same lectures, the same supervision, and generally the same quality of education that's being offered. Um, but there's also differences, and I think the main difference is that our on-campus program is 40 hours a week, the online program is offered as a part-time program for 20 hours a week. Basically that means that you can combine work and study um, and still get the degree. But of course with a part-time program itself two years it takes four years. Um, what is also different is the way that you communicate. You're doing this online, you're not here on our campus in Wagen University, but you're doing this from your own home or wherever you are at that time and take the courses online and interact also online with your fellow students. And you said something about students being able to combine work and study. Does this mean a full-time job or a part-time job? No, a full-time job, say 40 hours a week, is definitely a little bit overdoing it because you will have to work for 40 hours, study for another 20 hours every week during four years and that's probably over asking. So what would you say is the main focus of this program? Well, it's about nutritional epidemiology, and that means we study the relation between food intake at the one hand and uh, health outcomes, disease at the other hand, and we study it in big populations to see whether there is a relation in that big population between food and uh, health. And we also study the public health to see how and why uh, we can improve the, the health of the population and their food habits. And what would be some of the highlighted courses from these programs? Well, of course we have courses on epidemiology, and there you learn how to design a good study and how to analyze these associations. For that you also need uh, statistics, so we also have statistics courses. But we also have courses on uh, nutrition, uh, how does and works into your body and when you eat something. And we also learn students how to measure uh, food intake, because when I ask you, what did you uh, eat yesterday? Yeah, I have no idea. No, so that's something we need to learn our students, how to get information about the food intake of their study participants. So this is also an important subject. And of course we have public health to, uh, uh, courses to see how uh, it works in a population, how we can improve uh, health. So what is the general course structure for this program? Well, the program as we offer it is very structured. You start off with a course in uh, September before you had a short onboarding to get to know how the program works and get to know your fellow students online. The um, course in general is three weeks of materials in which you watch knowledge clips, study assignments, um, do some assessments, interact with fellow students in some group work and then in week four you'll take the exam, finish the reports that you might need to finish and then after that take another course and that continues throughout the program. We also have one special course called the continuous course offered throughout the program in which you work with fellow online students on an assignment. It might be a design of a public health intervention or a research project um, and next to that you'll be taught some academic skills that coincide with doing that project. And you mentioned that I have to take an exam after every course if I was a student here. What happens if I was really busy with work and I can't either make the exam or I fail the exam? Well, that does happen, as it happens on campus, of course. Um, and we have reset periods in which you can retake the exam. Uh, in both February and in August, you can reset for all the exams that you failed or didn't do at all. Um, of course, it's desirable to do it as close to the, to the right. course as mm -hmm. possible. But if you fail or couldn't make it, you can take a uh, re-exam at that moment. So how do exams work then? Do students have to come to Wageningen or can they do them online? They can do them fully online. We've partnered with a company to offer remote proctoring, which basically means that in your own room, um, with your own computer, you can take the exams. And through the computer, you're being watched. So there's no invigilator in the room, 
but it's remote that's your proctor and in that way you can do it at your own time and also because students will be from different time zones it's not necessary to do it for example at nine o'clock Wageningen time but you can do it also at a time which suits you within a select, selected time frame. That sounds like a great opportunity then. Yes it is. Do students ever have to come to Wageningen? Yes we have the so-called Wurwijk. Uh, in every uh, year students come to Wageningen for one week. In the first year it's uh, mandatory but in the second year it is obligatory and in the second year we use this work week uh, to discuss the group work uh, to practice with some uh, skills to have some interaction with your uh, supervisors about the group work and of course discuss uh, the group work live with your fellow students and in the first year people uh, told us already that they like it to come to Wageningen so we also give the opportunity to be there but that's not really necessary in the first year Right, so they don't have to come in the first year, but they no. can come in the second yes, year. Yes, in the second year, it's really necessary for the group work. We've been talking a lot about courses, but do students still have to do a thesis and an internship the same they would have to do for the regular program? Yes, definitely. It's the same program. It's the same degree you get in the end, of, so the thesis should be of the same quality. Um, only the location where you do the thesis can be different. Um, you can do it at home or in Wageningen. You're welcome also to come to Wageningen and join the other thesis students from the on-campus program or something in between because it's also an option. Some people might come for a month to get really a kickstart in their thesis work, then do the rest of the work part-time at home and then finish it off again with a month in Wageningen. So there's a, a lot of different um, schedules possible, um, but it's six months full-time work. So if you spread it out as half-time, it's uh, a full year of working on your thesis. And then would you mind giving some possible examples of what students have done? Yeah, let me give an example of a student that's starting this September. Uh, he will work on the relation between red meat intake and uh, the risk of mortality. And he will do that in a group of uh, cardiovascular patients. So people that are already have a cardiovascular disease to see whether it still matters whether they, uh, what they eat. So that's a very nice topic, I think. And we yeah. have all kind of Topics, so. And the fact that you could do it from home yes. as well is really You can nice. use our data in a secure, secure environment and uh, do all your analysis at home or make a combination. And there's something called staggered admission for this program. Could you please explain what that is? Yes, I can. Um, basically, there's 50 places in a maximum of 50 places in our program, and we limit that to make sure that we can still offer good supervision, um, good group interactions in, in smaller groups and also good quality of supervision during the thesis work. So basically that means if you're admitted before um, the first deadline and there's no, not 50 places yet, you get a place. <coughs> if there's more applicants that have been admitted by that time, um, we'll look at again at the quality who fits best with the program. But so far our experience is that if you apply in time, you'll be offered a place. Are there some specific bachelor's programs or previous topics or work that are preferred for this program? Yes, there are. But of course, in, in this setting of the online program, which in which work and study can be combined, <coughs> also work experience plays a large role. Um, people with a nutrition background, nutritional sciences or biomedical sciences or public health sciences with a strong focus on research and some links to nutrition. Um, are admitted to the program when, when they meet the criteria on the uh, grade point average, the GPA of at least 70%. But also um, people from different backgrounds with a lot of work experience can apply and we have some very good students who have a different degree but have relevant work experience and are doing very well in the program. And is there any special online skills or personal skills that you recommend students have for this particular program? Well of course you're on your own at home and you're learning through your computer. So if your computer fails, you should be able to get that fixed or have someone fix it for you. Um, and also your exam should take through your own computer and your own settings. So you should be able to kind of make sure that it works, but we're also providing support for that uh, through tests in which you can make sure that everything works well. Um, and it is um, combining work and study requires some personal skills in that you can not postpone all the work you need to do it now you need to uh, make sure that you spend those 20 hours a week on the course and not think okay this week i don't have time i'll do it next week um, and that requires some personal skills 
So you need to be really motivated as a student in order to do this. Yes. Yes, and from a teacher's perspective, I think it's also very important to have the willingness to study online. And studying online is not uh, only sitting on your own on your computer, but also interact with the other students and interact with your teachers. Because with, uh, when you interact with others, you learn much more than when you are alone. So the willingness to do that and to collaborate online is also an important student characteristic. Thank you guys for your time today. You're Thank welcome. You. I hope I provided you with enough information about this interesting program. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at students at word.nl or schedule a Skype meeting. And if you have any general questions about admissions or studying online, please check out the video, The Essentials of Studying Online at Bachaninga University. Thanks.